Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome, mad creators, to the Underground Laboratory, where together we're going to create some awesome comics because this is Making Comics 101, and this is a bonus issue. So this week we're talking about pitching. So if you haven't seen Monday's uh, issue, all about pitching, I, I showed how to do elevator pitches and and just a you know went pretty. I went pretty deep on some stuff, but I want to go deeper on one thing in particular, and that is the well. I don't know what you would call these, and I, I, to be honest, I don't even know if this is something that is done that often in the comic book industry. I have a little bit of background in uh, the children's television uh, industry, and so that's where I learned how to do some of this stuff. But there are some parallel uh, devices that you can use to pitch comics. Some of you guys might be familiar with the ash can. I don't know if, if too many people are doing this anymore now that we've got digital printing and you can pretty much print a whole comic, but before that was the case and before the prices went down on things like that uh, a lot of times what we do is just a color copy so I did this it's basically just a black and white copy of my first idea for a comic manhunter creature of the night and I think I just I colored that in by hand uh, but it's basically a really short sh story that I can you know you can just leave people and I guess they call it ash cans because usually that's where it ended up um, and then even recently I started doing some of these there was a time where uh, I was going I, I had planned to get my book and bring it to conventions and some people were uh, expecting it and I just didn't get it done in time so what I did was I did, just did this preview and it was just it's just a small preview but what I did was I think I sold what did I sell the now, I think I sold these for a dollar, but there was a dollar coupon, so that if you get this, you know, and sign it, these are limited editions, so maybe there's some collectability or something. Um, but, and I think it was only for certain people that had specifically asked for it. It wasn't something I was just passing out, but just something to give them a little preview. You know, they pay a dollar, but they also get a dollar off in the comics, so it's kind of like, you know, they get it for free. But anyway, so I was doing that. Those are, those are ash cans. That's more tailored to comic books, but. I don't think it would hurt to do sort of what they do in film and television to pitch an idea for, I was gonna say an original comic book, but you might, if you're a writer and you wanna work on Spider-Man or something, it might not even hurt to do, you know, to do sort of a pitch Bible because the problem with writers is it's, it's harder to, get a captive audience that's why elevator pitches are so important because you you get you only have a, a, a very short amount of time to sell your idea but the thing is if you can show maybe visually or put together a nice package of your idea even if it's a concept i don't even know if marvel or dc comics are open to this thing because i like i like i mentioned before i'm kind of i do my own original stuff i don't really have any big desire to work for Marvel or DC, although I do love those characters and everything and I grew up with them. But anyway, so so I I took it upon myself to uh, create sort of a, an, uh, call them series Bibles, um, pitch Bibles, whatever you want to call them, uh, for one of my early comics uh, retrofits. So, you know, it's just that would basically, you know, just something that it would hopefully capture attention. I mean, you can get sort of an idea from that. Oh, this is something, it's kind of strange. These people look like they're from the 70s and everything. Um, and I did show this a little bit, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this one in particular. But, you know, here we've got a little short synopsis, and it looks like I crossed something out here. So maybe I was just trying to make it even smaller. And then I talk about the direction of the show, the or the series, the focus, the style of the show. And some of this I borrowed from some other uh, other projects I worked on, and I'll probably show you those too. And then I just go in, I talk about the characters, uh, and then some of the supporting characters. And then I give a little synopsis on each particular issue and what happens on that so they get a better idea. And then I just provide a sample script so they know kind of what my writing style is like. So we've got that. And then in the back, I have also have sample artwork. So, so that is sort of a sort of a pitch Bible. It's been modified a little bit to what you may typically see as a, a film or television script Bible. But I think this might be a good idea to present an idea to like an image or alterna or somebody who is interested in uh, print or publishing original ideas. Uh, I could be wrong, but you know, I, I, I would maybe be impressed if I got something real cool like that rather than just, you know, your regular samples or whatever. So this isn't necessarily a pitch Bible, but this is uh, sort of like a mock-up for a children's uh, book that I wrote. And I really like this book. And I, I someday, I think now that uh, 
KDP and, and print on demand is, uh, is a thing, I may go back to do it. The, re the reason why I abandoned this is because it just didn't fit with the whole mad scientist aesthetic. But the idea behind this book is it's, it's kind of a fun guide, you know, tongue in cheek, kind of irreverent guide for kids on their family vacation. A lot of this stuff is going to be outdated because most kids nowadays, if they want to occupy themselves on a family vacation, they've got their iPads and all that. This is before all that. So I may have to update it. But anyway, so I kind of put this on the back burner, but it is fun. So I did, this kind of shows you the style of the book. Other than in here, I would probably put, I was going to drop in some, like those old postcards with the images from the different places. So, but more or less, that would be the style of the book. And the interior is just basically the book. It's all, I laid the whole book out. Um, it's just not in color and they're rough drawings as opposed to finished drawings. But if someone were to read this, they can get the idea of basically the entire pit, or entire book. So I'm basically with this, I'm just pitching the, the idea for this kid's book. And I don't know, something like this, I think it would fall in line with like the Diary of the Wimpy Kid and, and those type of books that are so popular right now. So I think I may do something similar with this now that I'm doing some other publishing stuff and maybe do it under a non de plume or something like that. But so anyway, so that's this is something that I make, might submit to a children's book publisher. OK, now this is the kids television show that I developed a while back and it got it, it's a porch light entertainment was the company that optioned it. So it was actually optioned by a Hollywood studio and these guys produced what are they? Um, they had a show called Adventures from the Book of Virtues, JJ the Jet Plane. These are all kids shows. They do children's entertainment and another one called Tuttenstein, I think. Um, I think that was an animated series, but this is sort of, you know, this is the concept for uh, a show I developed around this real life given ape and we kind of created a whole character around him and everything. Um, but anyway, so here's, this is sort of the, the series overview. And we did something interesting with this where we wanted the actual characters to tell the story. So you can see if you, as you read this, it's the characters introducing the story. So you get a feel of the characters just by them doing the narration. So as you're reading through here, you know, we talk about the series and then they keep kind of interrupting. It's like this is sort of the, the basic, you know, uh, real formal type, you know, narrative and then these guys kind of jump in and they interrupt and everything and you get a, a feel for the fun uh, you know the whimsy of this particular show we talk about the story structure here the kind of comedic elements throughout the store the sh show uh just some of the fun it kind of segues into some fun things like our villain of course a mad scientist that's this <laughs> this is early stuff this is a way back a long time ago and that's kind of when i started getting into the whole mad scientist thing but um Again, just kind of going through here, some of the, you know, this is talking about, you know, it was an educational show uh, and it starts talking about the, the food groups and all that kind of stuff and, you know, so, and it would be done with like puppets and live action and things like that. And we did shoot a pilot and everything for it. Um, and then we talk about the land that, it, the setting, the land that it takes place, the tree house for the main character where they live, the villain's evil castle, the mad, inside his mad scientist lair, um, and then just some other elements. And then we go into the characters and we, again, we just dive deeper into their particular um, personalities and everything. And then I, I know at one point, I don't know if they're in here, but I thought we did have outlines for different episodes. Maybe that was before we actually got an option because this was after the option and then they hired a professional writer to come in and, and spice things up and everything. And, and we kind of worked with them to get this ready, hopefully to go to series which it never did but you know that's kind of if anyone's ever worked in in <laughs> film or television or even heard of it uh things can get pretty close and then it's just something happens and that's what happened with this so um we did shoot a pilot and everything but anyway so this here this is uh, this this i'm kind of proud of. this is kind of fun so this is a concept i did for a uh, proposed um strip cartoon that i would submit to in, uh, syndicates and things like that Looking back, it probably, I don't know, it basically takes place in asylum, and this probably wouldn't fly nowadays. Um, 
but you know it's it's just about a, a bunch of basically for lack of a better word crazy people but it also used them as kind of a lens to look at real life um, events and things and comment on you know real life scenarios but because of that I wanted this to be like um, you know it's really dog-eared I mean this is this is my only copy and it's seen better days but I wanted to seem like a file like this would be a file that you would pull out if you're in, in this institution you would pull this out and it's got all these different you know files on all the different characters so um, Saint Anxiety is the name of the hospital the asylum this is an introduction it, it just basically goes into the story um, talks about the feel of, of the, what the strip is and everything and just a lot of humor and everything of course it's a strip cartoon and then I get a little deeper and this is mostly that's pretty much what I presented everything else is pretty much mostly the characters so this is this is one of the characters. This is Orson. He's sort of a, like a basically like sort of like a Jason or whatever. He's kind of a cross between Jason and Wiley e. Coyote, where he's a homicidal maniac and he tries to basically kill people. I think it says something about that he in in here that he it, like he he'll run after you with a chainsaw, but it's the electric kind and it conveniently comes unplugged whenever he gets close or something like that. Or or basically he ends, he ends up all the time just doing harm to himself instead of whoever he's trying to maim or or kill or whatever so but anyway so this is uh, this character and it just goes into a little bio it's got all the stats and everything so you can kind of see I laid this out so it looks like a sort of a file folder kind of so in some ways probably inspired by the old file cards in the back of the GI Joe cards and things like that so that's that character and then we've got another character this guy and it tells what their you know what sort of their issues are but he's uh, this is earwig and he's sort of a is he a paranoid schizophrenic, I think? Yeah. Um, so, you know, he's he's big into conspiracy theories. And, of course, like I said, all this stuff ties into... Um, because when you write, when you do... And I still don't know that this... I think this is still too out there for what would have been a strip cartoon. Because most people, right off the bat, wouldn't relate to this. But my whole idea with this was that, you know, life's kind of crazy, so why not view it through, through the lens of some crazy people? Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so anyway, this is, uh, yeah, so this is that character. And then, of course, we've got our staff. This is Rosie, and she's sort of like the Nurture Rasher nurture type um, character. And then Zod with two Ds, not to be confused with General Zod, but he is, uh, you know, he thinks he's an alien from outer space and everything, so he's sort of delusional. Um, so we've got that character, Chet, he's sort of the or orderly that <laughs> always messes things up. Then we've got Dr. Riley, he's sort of the voice of reason, um, sort of uh, whatever, the, you know, brass tacks type guy. Uh, not too crazy about everything that's going on, it's kind of, you know... And then, in contrast, what is that guy? It's Dr. Monroe. It's been a while since I looked at these. So Dr. Monroe is kind of, he's sort of modeled after, even though I don't think I've ever watched the show, but like the Howie Mandel character in St. Elsewhere, where he's sort of, you know, kind of fun and jo jovial and stuff like that. So got that character. Uh, Bromley, which I think he's just the psychiatrist that kind of comes in and talks to to all the people, and then Mary Mary, who is has multiple personalities and takes on all kinds of different characters. So, so that's kind of that's my that's sort of my pitch for the uh, Asylum, which again was meant to be a uh, strip cartoon. Maybe it could be animated or whatever. I don't know. Some of it, like I said, just nowadays, I just don't know if sort of it wasn't meant to poke fun at people with mental illnesses, but. Um, but it could definitely be construed as that. It was more of a commentary, like I said. But anyway, um, so this is the last one I want to show you. Uh, this is a animated series pitch that I developed with Jess Harnell. Um, if you are, if you're not familiar with Jess Harnell, he is the voice of Wacko from Animaniacs. He's also the announcer on America's Funniest Videos, and he does. He's voiced so many different characters. I mean, he's like one of the most successful um, voiceover actors out there. So um, so yeah, I partnered with him and we developed this and uh, so he did, he created it and wrote it and I did all the artwork and conceptual design. But it's called Rock and Roommates and it's basically, you know, loosely based on him and his brother and then some of their friends and everything. But the idea is it's this kind of, you know, rock group that inherits this old castle and there's a, a, a actually a real magician in there and it's just, it's, you know, it's, just crazy. So, um, 
hijinks ensue. So anyway, so we'll look at here. So here we got the place. This is sort of the city. It's sort of modeled after sort of the Los Angeles area where he lives, where it's just a, a, just kind of a microcosm of all these different places. Just a lot of crazy humor and stuff like that. Then we get into, we start talking about the story, uh, where the parents move away, uh, kind of leave him sort of destitute. And one way or another, I think they, they end up start moving into this castle. I forgot exactly how that happens. But so the roommates all move in. And like I said, hijinks ensue. And then, uh, then we talk about the roommates. Again, get a little character development here. Uh, Jet and Baron, those are the two brothers. Then the other two roommates here, uh, Ziggy Steele. These are, you know, these are sort of modeled after real friends of him that I I met a couple of these people, and they're they're wacky to begin with. I could tell you that. Um, so these are the, these are some of the supporting cast, uh, the magician guy, and all the other people that kind of, you know, again more characters. It's a pretty big cast. You know, it would it, the intention was to be something similar to like The Simpsons, where it just got this large cast. So there's just all these supporting people that pop in here, there, and then of course there's a rival band, the Stinks. Um, these are all the different, you know, characters from that. And then the house itself, and we get a little view at what each particular room looks like. Each character has their own room, and it's custom made towards them. And of course, when you're developing a cartoon series, you have to think about merchandise. So each one, these are the noisemakers, so each of uh, their guitars and things, uh, you know, they transform into weapons and all this stuff. I wasn't exactly sure how the weapons, I guess to battle the, the rival band. Uh, <laughs> it's been a while since I went through this. But anyway, so we've got all that stuff and then sort and then the keyboard and the, the uh, drum kit also turn into, you know, vehicles or tanks. And then they, in addition to that, they have all their own vehicles each one has their own vehicle this again this is all merchandise and stuff but like i was saying back to that the 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 one that i developed for retrofits we've got sort of the focus style direction of the show and then we've got some samples for what you might see in some plot samples here so so yeah that's that so basically you know this is uh I just wanted to kind of share these with you because I think this is a good route to go if you want to present your ideas, uh, if you're developing a, you know, uh, a comic. Now, like I said, nowadays you can just print a comic. It's, it's inexpensive to print a comic book, just even a one-off. You can do that through Amazon, through CreateSpace. Print a one-off and you can go and share that. Uh, so maybe this stuff isn't as necessary for a comic, but if you're, maybe you're for pitching a whole series or something like that, uh, some of these things can uh, come in handy, I think. Or, or, you know, and it's always good to do something different, something that somebody else hasn't already presented. So if you can approach something in a unique way, you can have some fun with it, whether you're building file cards, or, or more of a straightforward uh, type of you know pitch or, or whatever but yeah I just wanted to kind of show you what a story Bible pitch Bible whatever you want to call it looks like and from that hopefully you can gather if you do want to do something like this how to create one or what a potential company or anyone in charge that might be in the market for new content like this what they might be looking for so anyway that's gonna do it for today I will see you guys later and that is all Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Surfworks on social media. And now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. If you like making comics, then go to surfworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.